So reverse wireless charging or power sharing has been creating a lot of excitement lately in the world of mobile devices and more and more phones are starting to include this feature which essentially allows you to take your phone and use it as a wireless charging pad to transfer power to your wireless earbuds, to your smartwatch or even to another phone that accepts wireless charging. Now at first this sounds like this could be an absolute lifesaver for a long subway ride where your earbuds die or in a desperate situation where you have a friend with battery at 1%, but how well does this actually work? Can you actually transfer a reasonable amount of power in a reasonable amount of time? Or ultimately is this just going to take too long and kill the battery of the power sharing phone? So I questioned that and in this video I'll be exploring the rate and efficiency of power sharing technology by testing it on many different devices. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike O'Brien and in this video, we'll be testing out the reverse wireless charging or power sharing of several different devices to see if it's really feasible or practical in everyday life and if you should actually care about this feature when picking out a new phone. So starting off with what devices we'll be using in this video, the charging devices I have, I have two of them. I'll be using the Galaxy S10 regular and I'll be using the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So two drastically different battery sizes and both of them do have power sharing capabilities. And then I will be using these two devices to charge several different devices in a set amount of time to see how much battery is lost on those and how much is gained on the other. Now, the devices we will be charging are the Galaxy Y active right here we have the galaxy buds and then we also will be charging each other so the galaxy s10 and the galaxy note 10 plus and then just to have one device that's not a samsung device as an extra control right there we will be using an iphone 10r or iphone 10s sorry well, so we'll be charging all of these different devices for about 15 or 20 minutes. I'll have the timer set so that we can see exactly how much power is transferred and we'll get a better idea of whether or not you can use this feature uh, or how much battery you can expect to gain in what amount of time and how much power you'll lose from your original phone. So starting off with the Galaxy S10 charging the iPhone XS, on the iPhone we have 38% and on the Galaxy we have 57% battery initially after 20 minutes of charging, you end up with gaining 10% on the iPhone and you lost about 26% on the Galaxy S10. So that means in one hour, you would gain 30% on your iPhone and it would cost you about 78% on your Galaxy S10, which seems very impractical for the amount of power you're transferring and the amount of time you have to wait. Now, if we do the same experiment with the Galaxy Note 10 Plus as the charging phone, and we're charging the iPhone again, we start off at 63% on the iPhone and 80% on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. After 20 minutes, we only gained 3% on the iPhone and we lost 10% on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Now, I believe the reason for this is the placement of the phone. If you don't have it perfectly placed on the back of the Note 10 Plus, then it might not charge effectively. If you're using something like the Galaxy Watch Active, it will notify you of this, but the iPhone apparently did not and instead just charged very inefficiently. So speaking of the Galaxy Watch Active, charging the Galaxy Watch Active with the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, we started off at 100% on the phone and 2% on the watch. 20 minutes later, we gained 16% on the watch and it only cost us 5% on the phone. So that means in one hour, which is a very long time to wait, but regardless, one hour could give you 48% battery on your watch and it would cost you about 15% battery on your phone. This is the first one that actually starts to seem practical because 48% battery on a small watch like this could potentially last you the rest of the day. Now charging the same watch on the Galaxy S10, we started out at 62% on the phone and 59% on the watch. After 20 minutes, it only brought us down to 55% on the phone and we went up to 77% on the watch. This means in one hour, you'd gain approximately 54% on the watch and it would cost you about 21% on your phone, which again, if you're sitting down somewhere at work or something and you just, your, your watch died and you forgot your charger, this is a possible way that seems feasible to charge your battery for the rest of the day. So guys, just a quick little aside here, if you're new here and have not yet subscribed, but you're interested in learning more about any of these devices in this video or more videos just like this one, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss the latest videos.
So charging the Galaxy Buds with the Galaxy S10 now, the phone starts at 49%, the Buds are at 20% and 5%, and the Cradle is in fact dead. The Buds have been sitting in the Cradle for about an hour now, and this is all the juice they have left. After 20 minutes, they charged up to 30% in one ear and 20% in the other, and the phone only lost 4%, bringing it down to 45%. So we don't know if any power actually went into the Cradle. I am just going to assume that most of it, if not all of it, went into the Buds, being that they are the end product. I hope that's how the charge charging circuit works, but regardless, there is power in them now, and it was only 20 minutes, so that's feasible. Next up, charging the Galaxy Note 10 Plus with the Galaxy S10. So the S10 starts at 67% and the Note 10 starts at 2%. So this would be an emergency situation with somebody. And after 20 minutes, we have 37% on the S10 and only 10% on the Galaxy Note 10. So that means in one hour, you could gain 24%, but it would cost you 90%. Now, granted, you can't actually lose 90% battery from wireless power share. It caps you once you get to 70% lost or when your battery hits the 30% mark. But so now flipping the experiment and leaving a case on the phone this time. So we have a Galaxy S10 with a case being charged by the larger battery in the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. We started out at 95% on the Note 10 Plus and 34% on the S10. After 20 minutes, we gained 10% on the S10 and we lost 15% on the Note. So that means in one hour, you could gain 30% and it cost you 45%. Again, one hour seems way too long to wait for 30% battery, but you could potentially do this. And this is probably the first matchup that really seems like it might be plausible. So in conclusion, wireless power sharing seems to be a very novel feature. It seems like a really fun idea to have on a phone if you have peripheral devices such as watches or earbuds that would need to be charged wirelessly from your phone. This could easily give you an extra day of battery on your watch or potentially a couple extra hours on your earbuds. Now, charging someone else's phone, however, seems to be a bit impractical, being that you would have to wait a very long time to gain any meaningful battery on the dead phone. And then this will also cost you a very large chunk of battery on the charging phone. So personally, I don't think I will be using my phone to charge any other phones. However, if I'm on a subway and my earbuds die, I may be using this to charge up and get a couple hours of music out of those earbuds. So comment down below what you think about wireless power sharing. Do you think this is a feature that you must have on your phone? Do you think it's something that would be fun to have? Or do you think it is sort of a gimmick from the phone industry to just add more features to phones that may ultimately not even be used? Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.